Hello everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel. And today we have a different kind of tutorial. We're not talking about cameras, we're just talking about CAD. How do you actually solid model, 3D model threads for your STL files and your other objects you're gonna create in CAD? We're in on chip today, and since you can't just use a call out when you're actually 3D printing, you need the physical just 3D model threads. I'm gonna show you how to create those. So let's open up CAD and roll the intro. Okay, so here we are in on shape, and we're going to start out by creating a sketch on the top plane. We're going to use the circle tool, and I'm starting at the origin. This will become a little bit clearer later, um, but it just makes things a little bit simpler when you're doing the actual 3D modeling of the threads. Uh, I'm making my cylinder a half an inch. Doesn't really matter uh, if you whatever you want, but half inch is easy to use for a tutorial. Now these are going to be the minor diameters if we're making the exterior threads. By the way, so we have our initial cylinder. Now we need to go through and create that spiral shape that you see on threads. To do that, we're going to use the helix tool up here and click on the outside of your cylinder. Now, if you know the exact number of turns that you want based on the length of the cylinder you have, great, that's awesome for you. If you're like me and you're kind of lazy and you just want to make the same number every time, you can use pitch because that never changes if you put in the same number. So here we have one over 20 and we are going to use that later. It'll be the same thing. It'll mesh up perfectly. I use pitch like almost all the time. So here is our spiral pattern. Now we need to go through it and actually create the shape of our thread, that actual like, you know, cone shape. So we need to figure out what direction the axis is coming out of this helix at. So you're going to see right here, it's coming out right here, going this way. So we want to create something perpendicular so that way it'll actually match up with that. So it's going this way along the right plane. We're going to use the front plane. And this is nice because we have it at the origin. So that helix point actually starts right at the plane. If you have your helix point over here and your like front plane is over here, you need to get that distance and offset a plane that far. That way you can do this part of the tutorial. Again, that's why I start at the origin. So we're going to go through, use our polygon tool and create a triangle. Take this coincidal point and coincide that right there and then v for vertical we're going to vertical that and then you can just drag this over here if it ends up being on the wrong side and since this is an equilateral triangle you can mention either of the sides and if you want to make it 0 0.049 that will give you just enough once we go through and sweep this just give me one second You'll see that gives us just enough room. It's almost touching, not quite. When you're 3D printing, you probably won't even notice this because it's a pretty small scale model. Um, but I've been trying to make it where it's um, a little bit smaller. And also if you want to go for that more traditional thread look where it has like you know the capped things, can make this a little bit smaller. So here we have 0 0.045, 5,000 smaller than our total distance between both lines. And if you want to, you can even go out here and add a line, get that nice vertical constraint already. Dimension this to be, where is it? Right there, 0 0.005. And now you're gonna see we get both the inside flat and the outside flat. Now, how do we get this to actually go around this, right? We have our sketch, come up here to the sweep tool and click on your sketch right there. That'll be your faces and sketch regions to sweep. Then sweep path, we're gonna click on the helix right here. And it's gonna go ahead and bring this all the way down. Now, one important thing to make sure you're doing, hit add for the external right here. And if you're having problems, your merge scope might not be selected. You can always go through and hit part one and that should take care of that for you. And there you go. You have your threads all nice and neat. Now, what about interior threads? You wanna actually create something so a bolt can go down into it. Don't worry, I've got you. We're gonna go on the top uh, plane again, create another circle. That's gonna be our minor threads again. Um, actually, it's gonna, yeah, gonna be our minor threads, but not the way that I thought it was gonna be. We're gonna make this one 0.51, 10,000 is bigger than our minor threads on the external th and the exterior threads. Just that way there's a little bit of gap on each side and it's not gonna collide. Now you can make that smaller um, if you want less clearance, but that's all up to you. Go ahead and click on your donut. We're gonna extrude it by an inch again, just kind of simple. Again, click on your helix tool, click on the inside face, go to pitch. I'm gonna make this one divided by 20, so 20 threads per inch. And again, we need to figure out which axis our helix is coming out at, right? So you're gonna see it's coming out this way, going along the right side again, 
So click on our front plane. That's perpendicular because you want to get that perpendicular axis. So you can start here and sweep around. Then come up here, use our polygon tool, create another triangle. Use your coincident, coincident point right there and vertical that. Now you have a couple different options here. Um, with both of them. You can either add the threads to this and make this be your major or what I always do is I make this be the minor and I always kind of take away material just like you would typically do in like tapping. So we're going to use the same size threads 0 0.045 and we're going to also go through and create our line here. Keep that vertical constraint and then hit D for dimension 0 0.005 and here is our threads here. Now Go ahead, hit sweep, click on this. Sweep path is gonna be this, and it should be good to go. Except one problem is, um, if you forget to hit remove, it's just gonna add this little piece here. You can always go back into your sweep, hit remove, and now you're gonna see you've got these amazing threads in here. If it looks kind of confusing, go down to your left corner, hide all curves, makes it a little bit nicer to look at. Now one thing to note, the dimension from this point to the plane here um, should be 0 0.035, here it is right here. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and use the chamfer tool on this other semicircle here. Again, I've got it at 0 0.035 just to match that number. And it gives you kind of a nice little chamfer around the edge, kind of makes it cleaner um, and gets rid of that extra like hanging over part and also just makes it easier whenever you're trying to get a bolt into the actual part. So there you go, there's your internal threads. Did I say, oh yeah, interior. Internal threads, interior threads, same thing. So if we go ahead and we bring these into an assembly and we go into a section view, we can go to the front. You'll see that they happen to line up perfectly, just coincidental because we're using the same planes. Um, but if you create them independently at different angles, um, they will give you some red areas and not like line up perfectly just like so um it moved but you should get the point it won't necessarily line up perfectly but as long as you uh line up your little threads here and as long as there's some gaps you should be able to see that you'll see we have that ten thousands gap so this is a five thousands gap between here and we have a little bit of space between all of our threads so this should thread nice and easy and then what I've been doing is once I get the like tightened down to what I want, if I'm going to lock it in, I just throw in some glue or you can make a, like a nut down here and lock it in that way. And so there you go. Now you have actual 3D modeled threads instead of just a call out because a call out leaves you with a cylinder and I believe it's just going to print a cylinder, which is not going to be very helpful. So physical 3D model threads should be awesome for your 3D printing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And until next time, take care.